Hi, I'm Dr. Evelyn from Pasadena Animal Hospital. Let's talk about allergies. There are three different types of allergies that we see in our dogs and cats. They include flea allergies, food allergies, or environmental allergies. Depending on the type of allergy that your pet has, they may have different manifestations of those allergies. Some signs that you might see on your pet that suggest an allergy would include excessive itching or scratching, licking or biting, Sometimes they just lick their paws, potentially having redness or sores, what people call hot spots. Ear infections are also a sign of allergies. There are certain signs we would see with each different allergy. Let's take flea allergies. Flea allergies are typically going to manifest as itching excessively intensely in the belly area or near the tail. Food and environmental allergies manifest very similarly, which would include itching or licking in the belly area, the face, the paws. There are some allergies that are going to show up earlier in your pet's life, like food or environmental allergies. We typically tend to see them in younger dogs, but sometimes they can also manifest when they're older, between 8 and 10 years of age. Let's talk about diagnosing allergies. Diagnosing allergies can be tricky. However, we can use certain clues to help us determine which type of allergy we might be dealing with and directs our diagnostics and treatments. Let's talk about diagnosis of flea allergies. Some people think it's fairly easy. You see fleas on the pet, they have a flea allergy. That's actually not correct. Yes, if we see fleas, we can determine that they might be contributing to the itching or irritation. That doesn't mean that the pet is allergic to fleas. Some people might also think that if a pet's on flea prevention, they can't have a flea allergy. But it actually takes just one flea bite to incite an allergy. So most of the time, you're actually not going to see an infestation that's causing an allergy. So treating a flea allergy can be tricky. However, getting your pet on a proper flea prevention is always key. Now when it comes to food allergies, usually it's going to be to a protein source in the food, typically an animal-based protein like chicken, beef, pork. Pets that have a food allergy are usually going to have been exposed to a certain protein in their food for at least six months or longer. If your veterinarian suspects that your pet has a food allergy, it's usually recommended to perform what's called a food trial so we can determine what the allergy is caused by. When your pet is prescribed a prescription food for a food trial, you want to make sure to transition them slowly over about five to seven days to make sure that we don't upset their intestinal tract. Once they're on that food, we want to make sure that they're on that food exclusively for at least a minimum of two to three months. That's how long it can take for us to see if there's an actual response. Now the most important components of a food trial would include the food challenge. So what we actually have you do is feed the diet that you were previously feeding to your pet or you can actually feed specific proteins. We want to see if your pet will start to itch again. That will confirm the food allergy and at that point we can avoid those particular proteins. Diagnosing environmental allergies is a little more tricky than a food allergy or a flea allergy. The reason that is is there's so many things in the environment and they're not necessarily things your pet has to have physical contact with. They can be aerosolized or inhaled. Normally we're going to be diagnosing a environmental allergy after we've ruled out food and flea allergies. Environmental allergies are also known to be seasonal most of the time in which case that can be also helpful in helping us diagnose those types of allergy. Now if your pet's unlucky they might have multiple allergies in which case it would make it a lot harder to diagnose. Treatment for allergies is a little misleading because we're not going to actually treat them and cure it, we're going to manage them. Managing a flea allergy is fairly simple. Keeping your pet away from fleas or areas that can be infested with fleas or if you have a flea infestation, treating the environment and making sure your pet is not getting constantly re-exposed to fleas. Food allergies are much easier to manage because you just avoid the foods that make your pet allergic. Now those can change over time if your pet develops an allergy early on in life. However, being mindful of what you feed your pet can be helpful once a food allergy has been diagnosed. For environmental allergies, there's two types of treatment options that we consider. One is medical management, and that's usually going to be in the form of either oral medications, topical therapy, along with medications that help with itchiness and irritation. The second option is immunotherapy, what people know as allergy injections. And allergy injections have the least side effects and they're going to target the problem. You're going to retrain the immune system to not be allergic, and that's going to get you the best response. Now there are some pets that are very allergic and they might need to be on multiple treatments to control their allergies. So at this point, if your pet's allergies have been identified, we have a treatment plan and they're not responding, then there are other options we can look at. And typically that is in the form of a referral to a veterinary dermatologist.
allergist. They are trained to treat these more severe cases of allergies to manage your pet's allergies. Don't let the frustration of trial and error, the frustration of multiple modalities for treatment discourage you from making sure that your pet's comfortable. Allergies can be very frustrating because it is a lot of trial and error. There is some times that your pet might not respond or there's certain times where they might flare up unexpectedly. Just know that speaking with your veterinarian and having a plan in place is the most important to make sure your pet's as comfortable as possible.